let's talk about champagne. You're probably wondering where is Chris? Well, this week Chris couldn't join us, but rest assured she'll be back. This week, life, family got in the way of getting a review together and she wasn't able to come up and do a review. So you're stuck with me this time. And while I was doing research on the, the bottle I wanted to review, it dawned on me that Everyday Bubbly hit its one year milestone this, this month. And for us, that's a pretty big milestone. We, we've been posting content, posting reviews, and sharing my journey and now Chris's journey with you for a year now. And I remember when we first started just putting this together, starting the company, starting the, the, the journey into grower producer champagnes, into, into knowledge, into adventure. I, 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 I couldn't even think last year that this is where I'd be right now with the background of knowledge and the experiences and the journeys I've been on. I, I, I didn't even, I, I never would have thought about it. So this is gonna be a very slightly different review um, because I, in this I really wanna to talk to you about why I chose this bottle, the Frank Bonville Grand Cru Brut Blanc de Blanc. This will always have a special place in my heart primarily because this was the champagne that really started me on the path of grower-producer champagnes. At the time, I had gone through and sampled oh, everybody, Dom Perignon, Le Vave Clouquot, Moet Chandon's, uh, uh, all of it. I, 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 uh, Nicolas Fayette, I mean, I, I went through absolutely all the big names and I remember saying to myself, this is good, this is what champagne, I remember the first time I had Cristal, I, I said to myself, I get it. I'll never spend $380 on it again, on, on it again but I get it, <laughs> I just did it. And as I was exploring more champagnes and really starting to learn, I came across the Frank Bonville. And I remember when I took it home, and I put it on ice, and I remember, I remember the first time I opened it. I remember the first time that cork came out, and I remember the very first time its nose hit me. And it, it, really, it really is a special thing for me, like I get a little bit emotional because this is the champagne that put me on the path that I now follow. And I could not think of a better champagne to celebrate our one year anniversary than the Frank Bonville Grand Cru Blanc de Blanc Brut. Now, Frank Bonville uh, is run by Oliver Bonville. Uh, they are in Avis. And I got a chance to see their house and to see their fields last year when I was in France. And I went to see one of our partners, Bokin Dupont. He's also in Avis. He literally is right around the corner from, from Frank Bonville. And so I had a couple hours to kill. So I was just walking around Avis during harvest. And let me tell you something. I, there are a few places on this planet that were more beautiful than Avis. It was just... Beautiful, uh, it, it was fantastic, but anyway, I digress. And I didn't get a chance to, to meet Oliver, it was harvest, and I was not gonna knock on the door and try to, you know, at some point I would love to meet this man and sort of shake his hand and say thank you for what you've done and, and, and making a champagne that really moved me. And, and it did. 
and it opened my eyes to what grower producer champagnes are all about. And with that, let's uh, let's open her up. Let's 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 take a little trip down memory lane. I don't drink too much of this um, because I drank so much of it. <laughs> I mean, I drink a lot of it. Uh, so all I'm gonna put in this, uh, like I said, they are in Avise and Auger. And all of their plots are Grand Cru. Now, what does that mean? It means that they are the best of the best. They are the highest quality. They have been given a rating so high that they're, they are Grand Cru. And it's an important label, um, more so from a, from a historical point of view. And you know, I think we're gonna do a review and a tutorial on what the classifications mean and, and break down things like that. But for the time being, this is 100% Chardonnay, like I said, from Avise and from Auger. Uh, the dosage comes in at about eight grams per liter. Um, this is a consistent champagne for a grower producer. Frank Bonville makes a consistent uh, champagne, primarily because about 50% of the wine that goes into this is reserve wines. So the ability to control the the consistency is there because of that great stock of reserve wines. <sighs> Here we go. There we go. There we go. That is just beautiful. That is, that is just beautiful. Have some eye candy. The beauty of the Frank Bonville is its pace. Uh, the, 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 that, that's not a technical champagne term. It's rhythm. It, 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 it's, 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 it's a song. It really is. It's a song in a glass. It's less a representation of a person as it is a representation of, of, a, of a style, of, of an approach, of a vision, versus someone making a champagne to represent me or represent this person, my grandfather, my grandmother, my mother, blah, 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 things like that. All beautiful things. But with this, this is more, listen, we, we, we are going to make a symphony in a glass. And that's what this is. This is a symphony in a glass. It, it, it's, it's so consistent in how it flows. The first floral notes hitting your, your nose, the, the grapefruit, the pear, the apple. Then you, you hit that, that, that palette, that, that attack is so perfect. It is so perfect. It, is, it, it starts off with a light blast of crisp, fresh fruit, fresh, Chardonnay, and then it starts to build. And then you get that beautiful mouthfeel. You get the tension, you get all of these wonderful, wonderful sensations. And this champagne is really about sensation. Oh. It is just beautiful. And there's that OJ. Oh, good, good God. And unfortunately, the, the sad thing is, it, this is becoming harder and harder to find. Um, it, it's, it's very hard to find now. I mean, uh, my local, uh, local liquor store uh, used to carry it by, by, by the ton. Now I'm lucky to find a bottle, and for a good year, uh, I couldn't find a bottle at all. Um, I had to, if I wanted one, I'd order it from out of state and have it shipped in. One of the bigger importers out in California had made it very clear that, you know, getting the Frank Bonville these days is pretty tough. Don't know why. Um, I, I don't have a problem getting champagne. <laughs> you know, I, I pick up, I drop an email and say, hey, I need 10 cases. And in four or five days, 10 cases shows up. Don't know what I'm doing right. Don't know what they're doing wrong. I don't ask questions, but uh, yeah, the, 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 it, it is very hard to find. So when I do find it, um, I grab a bottle of it and I, I enjoy it. Oh, 
Oh, it's just beautiful. I don't know what else to say about it. It is the champagne that set me on the path because of its complexity, because of its, its wholeness. And I've never really used that term before, its wholeness. There is not one part of this champagne that is out of step with anything else. From time to time, you will get a champagne that might be paced wrong. You, you might get, on the attack, you might get a flavor that that overpowers you and mutes something else down the line, or it may open the door for flavor. If, if, I'm, if, if I know this has gone under a malolactic fermentation, I'm going to expect to have that mouth feel. I'm gonna expect to have that. And sometimes you don't get that because that part was missing. Or it was aged in a way where um, it was too young or aged in a way where it's too, too, aged too long. I've never really come across a champagne that's been aged too long. Too young, yes. And, and that, that's, again, a matter of preference, but it's also a matter of you buying a champagne and being able to age it yourself and you decide when it's ready. And I've got several bottles right now that I have tried and I've said, this is fantastic, but I wanna see what this will be like in five years. So I've got several bottles tucked away with some notes saying in five years, take it out and see where this is at. And Frank Bonville's Brut Blanc de Blanc Grand Cru is not one of them. This is, this is a bottle that is just perfect out of the bottle. Boom, today, buy it, drink it. You don't need to age this. The aging on this is probably in the, you know, standard, you know, one and a half years up, who knows, um, but with a Blanc de Blanc, aging is important, but only as much as it is going to, to allow that blending of flavors, of pace, of aromas to come together. And when it's ready, it's ready. I mean, I, I don't I don't ever criticize a champagne for how long it has been aging. I don't, it, it's irrelevant, okay? It's, if they say it's ready, then it's ready. And that's the beauty of it. They are constantly tasting, constantly sampling, constantly reviewing their product. And when they make the decision that it is ready, it's ready. So however long something ages, you know, doesn't usually make a big difference. I do like to know because it's a metric and the kind of person I am, I, I just like to know that sort of information. But for one year, um, we've come a long way and we are really just happy to be here, happy to keep making content and happy to be sharing our love of champagne, sharing this journey and hopefully getting some more friends, hopefully getting some more partners, hopefully getting some more exposure and getting more knowledge out to everybody and having fun doing it. I say it all the time, this is the absolute best job a guy could have. You'll never hear me complain and I have every one of you to thank for that. So until next week, champagne every day. Thank you.